I checked my email a few days later for any follow-ups from the recruiter and... Oh man, it's so relatable. <laughs> What's up, phonies? Today I got a reaction video for you guys. Alright, I came across this really cool clickbait video. It's an interview, $300,000 per year job. It's a real software engineering interview for a 300k per year developer job. And this guy recorded his interview, which, I mean, that sounds pretty awesome if he actually did that. So let's get to it. Hey, what's up, guys? I recorded my interview for a software engineering position at a hedge fund in Chicago. The interview is for a junior position with two to three years of experience and has a salary of $300,000. This was my first interview in a while, but I'll be doing a few more and posting them on here as well. So if you want to stay tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And yeah, let's see how this goes. This is Alright, so first impression. I already like the dude. He has a really likable persona, so... Alright, let's see where this goes. This is what my setup looks like. I have zoom on one monitor and coder pad on the other. Alright, so uh, he's using a MacBook Pro. I'm not going to judge him on that even though I'm a, a Windows guy, a PC person. You guys can hate on me if you want, but uh, whatever. Let's keep going. <laughs> A recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn, and since I lost a lot of money to these guys buying GameStop, I thought I'd try to get it back by getting a job with them. Usually how these software interviews go is, they'll have three steps. First, there's a call with a recruiter to briefly go over the position and your resume, and I already did this a few days ago. And now I'm doing the second step, which is a video call with an engineer to go over your resume again, then solve a technical coding question. And if you pass this round, you move on to the final round, which is usually four or more technical coding questions, back to back to back to back. I don't know about four or more. Yeah, so here he says on-site interviews have four back to back to back coding problems, and maybe that's the case for these quant firms. But with my experiences with uh, Fang and other, some other tech companies, it's three back to back to back code problems and then a design problem. So. Uh, maybe they do it differently. I don't, I don't know. Let's just keep going. Here. Yeah, the moment before the interview starts is always the worst. Like, I always try to get in a couple minutes early, and I'm usually doing exactly what he's doing. Just like, uh, what am I... Like, there's really nothing to do. You can, you can really do for a couple minutes, you know. Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. I took out the audio for privacy, but we chatted about the position and what type of work the team does. And then I was asked a few questions about my background. Tell me about your background and highlight one or two projects you're really excited about. What languages and technologies did you use in that project? Can you think of an example at work where you've had to analyze quantitative data and make a recommendation? And lastly, the dreaded technical question. It's funny for me, the dreaded question is actually, um, what was your, was the most recent challenge that you've had at work? And I'm just like, challenges? Like, everything's just, it doesn't really feel challenging. You can't just say like, oh, I uh, deleted the code base, you know, like, what are you, <laughs> that, that one's always difficult for me. Yeah. Also, what are your strengths and weaknesses, stuff like that. But yeah, let's keep going to this code question. Design an algorithm which takes a positive integer, which represents a length of rope. And this length of rope can be divided into smaller lengths, where the smaller lengths are also integers and we want to return the largest number we can get by multiplying the smaller lengths together. For example, given a rope length of five, we can split this a bunch of different ways. Five ones, two ones and a three, a two and a three, two twos and a one, but eventually you'll find that the largest product you can get is six, so the algorithm should return six. First, I wrote out a few examples to try to visualize the problem. I tried to look for patterns, but I got confused. So I ended up writing a recursive algorithm that brute forces all the possibilities. At least he can do a recursive algorithm. That's like the weakest thing I, I've got in my toolkit. To return the maximum. And that worked. 
but the algorithm was extremely slow. And after watching me struggle, the interviewer finally gave me the hint that my brute force algorithm didn't need to try all the possibilities. It only needed to split the number into twos and threes. Every positive integer larger than one can be broken down into a sum of twos and threes and the product would be greater or equal than the number. Let's run through an example. See you're given an input of 11. You notice that breaking it in the middle would give a pretty large product, so we try five and six. But notice that five can be broken into two and three, and six can be broken down into three and three. And those products would be larger than the product of five and six. So the answer for 11. Yeah, it's really great that he's breaking it down like this and just reviewing, because Making this video, honestly, it's probably going to be a great time investment for him because he he really knows how to do the problem now. And I'm sure next time he comes across something like this, he's going to think back in his head to the video that he made, the mistakes that he made in the, you know, the phone in the technical interview and just nail it next time. And would be two times three times three times three, which is 54. But how do you know how many threes and how many twos to break it into? You want to break it into as many threes as possible and only use twos to fill in any remainders. Now I was finally able to write a more efficient algorithm, but I needed way too much time and too many hints. I checked my email a few days later for any follow-ups from the recruiter and... Oh man, that's so relatable. <laughs> But it's all good. That just means I gotta practice more lead code. If you guys wanna practice this exact same question. Yeah, it's a really bad thing that recruiters are doing these days. They just like pray and spray uh, for applicants and then they don't they don't take the time to follow up with you. And especially like Amazon, they don't, they don't even let you know any feedback. Which, I mean, at least in my experience with Amazon, they didn't go ghost me afterwards. Um, I've only been ghosted by some startups actually, uh, thankfully. But it really sucks when you're just sitting there waiting and you never really get that closure that you got rejected. Yeah, I feel for the guy. I'll leave a link to the leak code down in the description below. And yeah, I hope this was insightful and thanks for watching. Yeah, so I'm really glad that he made a video like this. Someone was brave enough to make a video of themselves, you know, not succeeding. Whereas a lot of other YouTubers are out there like making these Oh, I just got t uh, accepted by so and so company making eight thousand eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Like, ha! you know. But this guy, you know, he's on his grind, and he show he he's showing us what it looks like to be doing the work, right? And I looked into his background a little bit, and he works at Microsoft already, so he's already doing very well. And he's just looking to do better. Or, you know, maybe he's just making some content. Either way, I think it provides a lot of value for the uh, software engineering community. Because we need more content like this versus, you know, just uh, total compensation. For, for, uh, not just like total compensation porn that's just making everyone have FOMO, you know. If you like content like this, my channel is Code Phony. I do code content and code adjacent content, you know, sometimes some funny skits. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.